most eminent worship song ever written. I think Carrie Joe did this years and years ago. I'm going to let T-Man kick it off. Go ahead, bro. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise today. Sister Joy, would you just pray us into the service tonight? Lord, we thank you for your holy, sweet presence, God. And Father, it's so good, Father, for brethren to dwell together in unity. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for your blessings, Lord, just for your presence, God. I don't want to wake up of a morning without you being with me, Lord. I know you're there, Father. 
Every breath I take, Lord, my heartbeat belongs. Father, it doesn't belong to me. It's you that gives me life, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given me, Lord. May I do more for you, Lord. May I share the love of Jesus with others, Lord. It is a love story, Father, what we have, Lord. The intimacy that we share, Lord, that you love me more than anyone in this world could, Father. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, in the lives and the hearts of people, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing here at CFC, God. May you have your way in the service tonight, Father. Lord, just bring forth your word, Lord. Anoint the lips of clay as the message is brought forth, Lord, from the portals of glory. Father, I pray for the youth as they're out tonight ministering, Lord, and they're inviting children and youth to vacation Bible school, God. We just thank you, Lord. We know you're going to bring in here exactly who needs to be here, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in the service, Lord, tonight for all the young people. Bless the teachers. Bless the leaders, Father, for it's in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Come on and give the Lord Amen. a praise tonight. You may be seated. Amen. All right, I want to thank our online audience for tuning in tonight. If you have a prayer request online, just put it in the uh, comment section. They'll notate it, and they'll bring it to us, and we will call it out loud at the end of service along with those that are highlighted, and we've got a lot that's been highlighted. We've got a lot to pray about, lots going on. But our broadcast is available online with Facebook and YouTube, so please share. Please share. Um, we really need people to share. The more You may be friends with people that other people aren't friends with, and it helps uh, as far as Facebook goes, and it helps to spread the gospel. Amen. There's plenty of ways to give tonight, even if you cannot attend. You can give on our website at cfcsandycross.com. There's a giving feature there. You can also give on our Share Faith app. The download instructions for Apple and Android are on our website and Facebook page. And you can also mail in your donation to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South NC Highway 58, Elm City, North Carolina, 27822. Again, thank you for your faithfulness. You can give in person now by safely dropping your tithe and offering in an usher's bucket at the back or by simply using your mobile device. Any visitors we have tonight, please turn in your slips to the Connect Corner. After service, we have a gift for you. And at the Connect Corner, you will find the monthly CFC event calendar is back. And along with that, hey, we got a whole new shipment of Kingdom Vision books. If you've never gotten one before and you want to read it, uh, please pick one up out there, and we appreciate that so much. It is being presented to Piedmont College as a part of their learning curriculum for seminary, and we are proud that Piedmont College would want to entertain the thought of having kingdom vision. And I want to personally thank Bishop Shane Calhoun, who's the dean of that college, uh, for that. I want to thank you all for uh, contributing to our fifth Sunday missions offering this past Sunday. You paid your tithes and offering, and in addition to that, you gave over $3,000 to missions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all something. Y'all just something, I tell you. Hallelujah. VBS is August 9th through the 12th. That's like really soon. That's like next week. Uh, this year with the movie theme, now showing no greater love. Joy, take it away. She has a few things to tell you about VBS. <laughs> All right. So we do know it starts next week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But this Sunday, those of you that are helping out with Bible school, if you will stay after and just devote some time, we would greatly appreciate it. We're going to be decorating. Um, and we will provide lunch. We'll feed you something. We'll feed you something good. But um, just also at the Connect Corner, there are invitations. It has our QR code on there. Real simple for people to pre-register their young people. And we um, also, on that flyer, it says pre-K through high school. So a lot of folks don't know that we have Bible school for the high school and middle school students also. So get you a few of those and hand them out and just word of mouth and share it when you see it on Facebook because we want to have a big crowd come out. We want to bless these children. This is the Young People's Revival, and yeah. I'm excited, and I thank everyone helping out with this, okay? All thank right. you. Amen. And, again, she, she needs everybody to sign up as soon as possible so that um, she'll have a head count for craft and supplies, okay? 
All right. The first Sunday door opening ceremony, welcoming new members is available this Sunday, okay? And so if there's anybody that you've prayed about it and you want to join CFC, uh, please see Pastor Tim and let him go over the uh, church constitution with you and bylaws, and then you'll be ready this Sunday because it's first Sunday. We cut out a lot of things during the summer on first Sunday, but this is something we still want to continue to do even through the summer, all right? The first Wednesday water baptism is at the end of our service tonight, amen, and so we'll prepare for that soon. That's all I have. It is summer, and so everything is short, sweet, and simple, amen, but I'm glad to be here with you, amen. All right, we'll do the prayer request after um, service tonight, and uh, actually, Pastor Tim will do that after the message and I'll prepare to get ready to baptize, and I got some help tonight baptizing. Uh, so with no further ado, the Fusion students, the King's kids, and the Junior King's kids can be dismissed at this time. Can we thank our volunteers for sacrificing their time with your children? They're not mine no more. My, all mine are grown. Hallelujah. I used to say our children. They're your children. They ain't my children. I'm just kidding. No, they're all our children. Amen. All right, we're going to get ready for the word, and then we'll be sending an usher to get the kids because I believe one of their own is being baptized tonight. And so we certainly want the kids to be a part of that. But as you know, uh, we are in the victimology series, and we finished up uh, what we're going to be preaching on this for this Sunday. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And God's laid it on our heart to make victimology a book. And so y'all be praying for me on that because writing a book is not the easiest thing in the world to do, um, but we're going to give it a shot. And we've done it before. We'll do it again. And the same God that helped us the last time will help us this time. Uh, so I'm doing that on Sunday. And what I've been doing here lately is I have been uh, just giving the platform to other people in the church and giving them the opportunity to preach. Amen. That's how I became a preacher. I had to have the opportunity. Amen. I didn't start uh, preaching when, the, when I got hired to be a pastor. I, had to, I did it for several years before that. And so tonight, we have a very abled and equipped person to bring us the word, and that's our assistant pastor, and he's got a word for us tonight. So let's encourage Pastor Tim Hall. Come on and bring the word, brother. Amen. And I learned a lesson last week about sitting in that chair. I'm going to sit here. Amen, where I can see better. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Come on. He ought to get the greatest hand clap. He's the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Truly, he's worthy of all of our praise. How many excited tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you excited about your church? Huh? Are you excited about what Jesus is doing in your life? Now, are you excited about this series that we're in? See, I don't know about you, but it has helped me so much. I have learned so much in this series, and it's, it's such a blessing. If you have your Bibles, we're not going to be before you long. I know we have baptism. And we're going to make a way. But we're going to do what thus said the Lord, and we're going to get on out of the way. Is that all right? Huh? I promise if you help me, I'll get on out of the way. Amen. Fifth chapter of St. John. Are y'all there? Victimology. Yes, sir. Very familiar passage. You know, as we've been traveling through this series, um, it's really been a tremendous blessing because um, as we've been going through it, I've been staring at this picture. This picture speaks volume to our lives in this series. I don't know if anybody caught it, but it says the demonic weapon of self-pity. 
Can I tell you one of the things that self-pity will do that attach itself to you? It will attach itself with the spirit of isolation. Isolation. A lot of times when we begin to feel sorry for ourselves, because of what we are facing and the fight that we're in, we have a tendency Instead of gathering around the saints, it's to isolate ourselves. That's one of his weapons, to first isolate you. What is the purpose for isolation? The Bible said, where two or three are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. But when you all by yourself, guess what? It seems like the devil voice get louder and louder. Am I right about it? What does it mean to be isolated? To be isolated means to be far away from places, building, and people. It means to be out of the way. Why? See, because if I'm alone, guess what? If I can't help myself... If I could surround myself with my brothers and my sisters, guess what I know for assured? Help is on the way. Come on here. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, two is better than one. For if one fall, the other one is able to lift him up. But when I'm by myself and I don't went through something traumatic and devastating in my life, it can paralyze me. See, and as I was looking at John the fifth chapter, I began to see this man by the pool of Bethesda. This man had been sick and crippled for 38 years. Now, we're talking about some struggles. This man had some struggles. We're going to begin reading at the first verse, and we're going to get on into this. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for what you're going to do. God, I ask that you will hide me behind the cross, God. God, I ask that you will speak, God, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and a word of understanding, God, that will propel us to new heights and new levels in you, knowing that you are the hope of glory, God, knowing that you are the author and the finish of our faith. Knowing, God, that we can look to you for anything that we need, God, for you are a great supplier. We thank you now for everything that you're going to do in our midst. We say, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Are you at the fifth chapter? Let's read a little bit. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there was in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in the Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these laid a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at certain times into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped first after the stern of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Mm. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? Everybody sick don't want to be made well. Some people want to use it as an excuse. I'm talking right. Why do I say that? Because I did it myself. Hmm. The enemy was handing out invitations to a party. And guess what? I was invited. And I gladly took the invitation. And that's what we do sometimes. 
Because sometimes what we're going through, we can make it all about us when it's really all about him. <laughs> I don't minimize the things that we faced in our lives. But I'm reminded, the Bible says, though these light affliction, God delivered them out of them all. That means no matter what we're facing, no matter how it look, God is able to bring us out. Am I right about it? Come on, talk to me. <laughs> 38 years. Come here, Chuck. Come here, Pastor. Everybody wondering what this is. What you see laying here? It's a pillow. But this was the same thing that he was taken to every day for 38 years. Huh. So I'm going to be the cripple man. Is that all right? Y'all kind of help me out. See, because now we're at home, but we're going to do what we've been doing for 38 years. Can y'all please help me? I mean, y'all know I've been sick a long time. Now, y'all know it. I mean, I know about your, your, your new house that you got. You know, I mean, but you ain't got to be all nasty because you got a new house. And you got that new car. All you talk about is that car. I'm sick of hearing you talk about that car. Every time I turn around, you want to raise your hand, tell me, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. How about me? How about what I'm going through? Y'all now talk about me and what I got to faith. I ain't got no new house and no new car. I can't even walk. Come, you will down there. Come take me to the pool. Just take me on back to the pool. I'm tired of y'all. I'm just laying down here. And I'm, I'm, you don't know, really know. Uh, they said that an uh, angel, an uh, angel come down and stir this water up. I think today my day. That's what they claim. Uh, I mean, I mean today my day. That's what they claim. Child, I've been coming for 38 years. Have you been? Don't, don't throw me off my pill today. Daniel, what are you doing? Yo, go ahead now. I don't need y'all no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I stay here by myself. They make me sick. Always oh, want to pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Him just get your thank you, Jesus. Thank it. Hey, thank no Jesus. I'm going through. I'm burning. 138 years. I'm been in this place. Every time I come in this poop, somebody always beat me to the punch. Tired of this mess. Hmm. Tired of these people gathering all around this stone. And what I want y'all to see, he went to the pool for 38 years. He was a complainer. Huh. He felt he was entitled. Huh. See, people that operate in self-pity, they won't celebrate your blessing. Come on, talk to me. Huh. See, they'll talk about you to other folks when they see God blessing you. See, but a lot of times they don't know what you had to go through to get to the place that you're at. I'm talking right. Come on here. Matter of fact, let me go back because the Bible says these light afflictions are but a moment to the glory that shall be revealed in you. Ah. See, but we are murmuring and complaining when we start going through. See, just because he was crippled, ah, he began to identify with his situation instead of identifying with the God that can change his situation. Come on, talk to me. And a lot of times, when we've been on the spot a long time, which I call stuck, come on here. See, I want you to understand something about this man. He was stuck at the pool. Come on here. He made this a way of life. And a lot of times, the stuff that we go through, we'll make it a way of life. When it's not. Uh, Thank God for Jesus passing by. Huh? See, because at one time or another, all of us were stuck in some situation that we couldn't see a way out. Thank God for Jesus. Coming by the pool. Huh? Even though there was a lot of people at the pool, good God Almighty, 
how many know that even though I can be around a hundred or a thousand people, it can still be like I'm wrapped by myself? Huh? See, the enemy got a way of making me feel isolated and feeling like I'm all by myself and ain't nobody in this with me. But when I think about the scripture, when he said, I will never leave you or forsake you, good God Almighty. Do we really forget what the word of the Lord is saying? I'm reminded, the Bible said that Joseph, though he slay me, good God Almighty, yet will I trust him. Come on here. These are the times that the enemy loved to show up. When my faith is being challenged. When my faith is being put to the test. When the situation in the natural looks so bleak. Huh? See, I'll begin to agree with the situation that I see in the natural. And knowing that we serve a supernatural God that works behind the scenes. Saying that all things work together for my good. To those who love him and are called by his name. Who name are you calling on? Oh, I'm talking right. I'm talking right. Huh? In this great big world, that's what the enemy's doing. He going around and he passing out invitation. Huh? You get an invitation. Come on, you get an invitation. Huh? You get an invitation. Huh? We got to be willing not to accept every invitation you get. Come on here. Just because I'm handed an invitation don't mean I have to accept it. Come on here. We got to stop getting in agreement with the enemy. Huh. See, some of us say, well, it's been a long time. He was there a long time. But can I tell you something about this man that was at the pool? He won't say. But a lot of people I'm seeing that are going through struggles, guess what? They know Jesus. But it seems like when a storm arrives, guess what? We forget all about Jesus. We throw him out of the boat. I'm by myself. Lord, you promised to help me. Where you at? Huh? See, we, we have a tendency to think Jesus is late. <laughs> I beg to differ. Huh? The Bible says he's always on time. Huh? That means in the midst of your situation, when you think he's late, He's always early. Ask Lazarus. Huh? See, because I'm reminded of what Mary and Martha say. Huh? The Bible said that Jesus stayed four extra days doing what he do. Preaching and winning souls for the kingdom. Healing sick folks. Wait a minute. Jesus, your buddy over there. You, you want to see your buddy? The Bible said that he intentionally waited. Why? Because he knew that Lazarus wasn't dead. Huh. He said, we're going to go that I may awaken him. Huh. A lot of folks in church don't fell asleep. I'm going to write about it. <laughs> See, this, we don't like this preaching. We don't like this kind of preaching. You can sit right up in church and fall asleep and be in a dead place. Oh, oh, oh don't, nobody, don't nobody know. Didn't nobody know that? That was a secret. Well, let me, let me can I make it plain? I can come in here every Sunday and every Wednesday and sit right in that seat and be in bondage to whatever the enemy brings to me. It's when I make a choice, good God Almighty, I'm not going to stay here anymore. For I am more than a conqueror. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Huh. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up and shall be condemned. It's when I stand in the authority of the Bible, good God. He wasn't even saved. He wasn't even saved. Are you hearing me? The Bible said then, when Jesus knew his condition, oh, you think he don't know your condition? Oh, it's a secret, huh? Oh, your condition is a secret. Oh, you ain't told nobody. He sees all. He knows all. He know exactly where you went. 
Come on here. Well, I ain't never told nobody this. But how about this? Jesus knows. He knows every pain. He knows every heartache. He knows where you are. And he's willing to meet you right there. In that place that you've been coming to. That stuck place. Good God Almighty. That's what I'm talking about. Huh. That place of bondage became his best friend. And a lot of times in our life, that what happens to us when we lose hope in him. And I'm talking right. What do we do in a stuck place? Matter of fact, me and my wife, we was watching a movie last week. Wonderful movie. Was it 65? It was something like that. Well, anyway, it was about a man. He had a family. But he occasionally left because of his job. And they would take a rocket and they would go all to different universes. But they had a meteor storm. And they crashed. But on this vessel, it was a couple that had a child. Everybody on this shuttle died except the little girl and the man that was piloting the ship. Why are you saying this? Because her parents died and she was left alone with a stranger. Mm. My God. He treated her like his daughter. And throughout the movie, it kept bringing back his relationship with his daughter who had a fatal disease and died while he was away. He began to treat her like it was his own daughter. He began to protect her and shield her when danger arose. They was in a land with dinosaurs. And this man would protect her with his life. It blowed me away. Now let me tell you what happened. The man fell in a situation that he was going to find a young girl. Because it was some wild dinosaurs that had attacked them. He told her to run, and she did. But when he went to find her, oh, my God. Woo. He was walking, and I'll never forget this scene. He was walking to look for her, and he stepped unknowingly into some quicksand. Good God Almighty. I began to say he stuck. He was stuck in a bad place with no one there to help him. What do you do when you're stuck in a place and you can't find any help? Who do you call upon? You call on Jesus. Huh. But God has put us here uh, to be a help in a time of need. Huh. Because Jesus lives in each and every one of us. The man began to call on the little girl and he called her name. Good God Almighty. And it looks like she would never show up. But as he was calling, he was steady sinking. Good God Almighty. I thought about a song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Come on here. He sunk to I couldn't see him anymore. How about the little girl showed up? And there was a branch on a tree. Nearby, where the quicksand was. And she was too little to pull down the branch. So she climbed on the branch. And as she climbed on the branch, the branch began to go down on her weight. And it began to lay over the quicksand. I began to see the man grab it. Good God Almighty. With his whole body submerged in the quicksand. And he grabbed hold of it. And he began to pull himself out of his dilemma. See, some of us need to pull yourself out of your dilemma. Stop crying and complaining. Huh? Grab hold to Jesus. Huh? The Bible said that he is the vine, the true vine. Huh? And if I can learn to grab hold to Jesus and stop grabbing everything else, everything will be all right. Huh? See, some of us grab everything else but Jesus. Huh? I'm talking right. Huh? We'll grab folks, huh? We'll grab folks. We'll grab mama. We'll grab daddy. But how about grabbing Jesus? Huh? People 
people are limited what they can do for you. Huh. The Bible says some men trust in chariots and some in horses, but I will trust in the Lord. Huh. And it's until we learn to trust him in every situation that I'm facing, no matter how it may look. Come on here. See, devil can play tricks on your eyes, your natural eyes. But if you learn to see with your spiritual eyes, I see you. Yeah, I see you, devil. I see you. And you better know God is turning it around. Come on here. Huh. I looked at this series, and I'm going to tell you what blessed me. You preach on Jonah, a prophet. She preached on Elijah, another great prophet who blowed it. Good God Almighty. <laughs> this, I love this. See, we would think because of their position in the kingdom that they wouldn't miss it. Good God. How about all of us miss it sometime? Huh? And if it's not for the help of the Lord, good God, where would we be? I'm talking right. I'm coming down somebody's street. Huh. Because a lot of things that we put our trust in never works. It leaves us empty still. So I'm wondering, what is it will, that will fill you up? Huh. Nothing but Jesus. And it's until we get the king of glory. Good God Almighty. Oh, I ain't finished yet. Can I talk about being stuck? Can I, can I tell you what stuck me? I'm glad you said I could because I am. What does it mean to be stuck? It means to be unable to move, unable to make progress, unable to move from one particular position or place, or unable to change a situation. Huh. Did y'all hear me? To think the same negative thoughts over and over again. I'm talking about being stuck. Ever since we've been in this series, she ain't moved. <laughs> you laughing, but guess what? Some of us ain't moved. How about that? We come every Sunday. Huh. And still ain't moved. Huh. He won't even say. But he had enough sense to keep going to the pool because that's all he knew. Huh. So I was saying to myself, as I look back over this passage, I said, Dad, 30 years a long time. I mean, couldn't you ask Chuck and throw me in there? Stop leaving me on. I don't want to stay on the porch no more. Just throw me in. I'm going to wait in the water. Huh. I don't bend outside the water and ain't nothing happen. Try throwing me in. Because I know for sure an angel coming at a certain time in the season. Huh. Come on, say it again. And I'll be there. <laughs> but he didn't. Because the very thing that he thought he needed, God showed him. It ain't in the water. Because the Bible declares in John that I am the living water. And if you drink of me, you will never thirst again. See, sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we miss it. Not intentionally. But because of our hurt and our pain that we experience in our life. Huh. None of us got a pretty story to tell. Huh. The Bible said that we through much, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom. Huh. See, you don't even understand that you're a trophy. You're God's trophy. We always ask why. Why? Huh. Why do God let people be alcoholics? Why do he let them be prostitutes? Huh. Why do he let them be drug addicts? That was never meant to be. Those are things that people choose.
to drown out their pain, to drown out their hurt, to self-medicate themselves because of the pain that the enemy has afflicted in their lives. Can I just talk about me? See, because I know about me. See, I don't know nobody else's situation, but I know mine. See, I experienced hurt as a child. It was in church. Huh? All of my life. Low self-esteem. In a house with a loving mother and a loving father that took me to church. Are you hearing me? But having a low self-esteem and never talking about it. Huh? Feeling like a nobody and never talking about it. Feeling less than and never talking about it. Was afraid to talk about it. Because I was afraid that if I told people, they would reject me. None of us love rejection. All of us deep down inside want to be loved. I'm not talking right. Huh. Can I tell you this? Yeah, you got good parents. Yeah, you got good family. But they can't love you like he can love you. Do we understand that? People could love me to a certain degree, Chuck. Huh? Unless they're filled with the spirit. I told a young man today on the job. I said, it's amazing how we let things separate us as a people because of our differences. I don't have to look like you to love you. Huh? I said, we don't went crazy. I said, do you think it's going to be more than one heaven? Huh? I said, you love Jesus and I love Jesus. We're going to be in the same heaven, brother. Y'all think it's going to be 20 heavens for every nationality? Do y'all really think that? No, we all are going to be in his presence, worshiping the king of kings and the lord of lords. Huh. And then we wonder why our churches are emptying out. Huh. Because instead of loving people where they are, we'll put a space. No, because you're not like me. I don't want to deal with you. But in the kingdom business, sometimes it takes getting dirty. Come on here. With your cute self. Too cute to help anybody. The Bible said that we are helpers of one another. All of us play a part in the body of Christ. Huh. See, the feet can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Come on here. The eyes can't say to the nose, I have no need of you. Every part plays a position. And until we get in alignment where God has placed us in the body, because it ain't but one head, and that's Christ. And when we come to a place of submission to it, good God, a place of surrender, uh, where I can stick my hands up in the air, Oh, to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Huh. It takes surrendering to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Huh. Yeah. You know what God showed me? See, I can get in this baptism a hundred thousand times and just get wet. Are y'all hearing me? Huh? See, when I started looking at this message, Pastor, I thought about the pool. And I thought about what it represents. Some people think because you get baptized, it gives you a relationship. Yeah. I can remember getting baptized as a young boy. But living in hell. Right after I came up out of the water. Because I was in a dilemma and didn't know how to get out. Huh. So guess what it created? A pity party. Huh. I felt like the world owed it me. Huh. Everybody.
everybody don't did me wrong. They got to pay. That's what I was saying. But it was me. I was pointing at everybody but me. Me. But it was until I start searching me. Huh. The Bible said, examine your own self. Huh. To see whether you be in the faith. Huh. Watch this. Because we do it. I remember preaching this message before. And my topic was, no more excuses. <laughs> the man. Jesus asked him a question. Think about this question. Will thou be made whole? <laughs> it's so comical to me because I see it. I said, God, God is a trip. God asked him, will you be made whole? He's been coming for 38 years. But the Holy Spirit showed me something. He said, yeah. He'd been coming for 38 years. But all he did when he came was lay there. You don't hear him asking nobody. It was some people there. Why didn't you become helpers of one another? <laughs> of you was in the dilemma even though y'all had different dilemmas. Come on here. See, we got a problem with helping each other. It ain't my problem. Deal with your own stuff. I got my own stuff. We become selfish because of self-pity. See, self-pity will make you selfish. You will see a brother and sister that you won't even help them. Am I talking right? It's getting mighty quiet in here. Maybe I need to liven it up a little. Hallelujah! Come on here. Because I'm talking right. I'm in the book. I love it. Because he had an answer. I really don't believe Jesus was looking for an answer. He asked them a question for him to examine his situation. See, Jesus knew. He had identified to the place he was at in his ailment. Sometimes that's what we do. We are identified with the ailment instead of identifying how to come out of it. No. Stop telling me about my problem. Help me with the solution. Did not the man of God just say that Sunday? It's easy to tell folks what's wrong with them. Why don't you never tell them how to come out? Help me to get out. The signs are clear. When I look through Jesus' ministry, the woman at the well, huh, the woman that came behind him to touch the hem of his garment, they knew their situation that they were in. What they needed help with is how do I get out? Tell me that. Since you know everything, you got all the sense, tell me how to get out of it. Because we have an answer for everything until people ask for a way out that they may get results. Huh. Why do you think he brought you out? To bring others out. Come on, I'm talking right. You can't be satisfied with just you being out. For the Bible said that it's his will that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Who have you told lately that Jesus loved him? Who you told lately that he's a way maker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness? Oh, y'all think they're singing that song for nothing. No, because they're being instructed by the Holy Spirit on that playlist. You better hear it with your spiritual ears. It might sound pretty and everything, but they are ministering in the spirit. And a lot of people are missing it. Huh. You're talking about a place of brokenness. And when I can get in the atmosphere of worship, mm, and as I listen to what the words they are saying, they are spiritual. Huh. See, you think you got to wait till the word come. God will set you free in worship. Come on here. Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. But if you, see, most people can't get past themselves. And see, they, 
won't lift their hand because of what they're going through or what they're facing in their lives. But when you understand that he's the true healer, he's the true deliverer. See, my hand automatically goes up. Come on, a hallelujah automatically comes out of my mouth. Huh? See, because I remember where I was and I see where I am. I'm not in the same place. That means my position has changed. That means I went from being stuck to unstuck. Come on here. And when you get unstuck, guess what you can do? Huh? When you get unstuck, huh? You can lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset you. And you can bring folks out. Come on here. I'm talking right. Huh? The enemy's not going to attack her without me helping her. Are you hearing me? He's not going to attack you and not let me help you. But guess what? If you don't open your mouth, how am I going to help you? I can't read your mind. Huh? But if we could get together and get on one accord, come on, and set aside every difference, come on here. See, God will show up in this place. He'll fill this room with his Shekinah glory. Good God. Stop complaining what you went through. Huh? Stop living in the past. It's over. I have no man. My well, Lord, just talk junk to Daniel Chuck. But then when Jesus asks you a question, well, I ain't got nobody. When the water's staring to put me in the pool. I've been trying to get in for 38 years. Chuck won't help me. They didn't even ask Chuck to help. They didn't even ask Pastor to help. Did he? Because they were so caught up on their condition. And when I put my condition before everything else, huh, it becomes an idol in my life. See, the man really made an idol out of his condition. Huh. What are you saying? See, he knew through his condition that it was some people that would pass by and that they would have compassion. But do you really want to be well? Boy, Jesus is so strategic. He asked them, do you really want to be healed? Huh? I'm quite sure they toss money at them all the time. Huh? But guess what? You kept coming back to the same place. That means your money was no good. Huh? Your money didn't give me my heart's desire. Because in his heart, he really did want to be free. Good God. Why do you say that? Because when I read the next passage, good God, the Bible says that. Jesus said, rise up, good God. Rise up. Rise up. You talking to me? Up, Chris. He didn't even contemplate it. The Bible said that he got up. Take up your bed. Good God Almighty. That means the thing that held you in bondage. I want you to pick it up. Huh. Now walk. Good God Almighty. I can just imagine him now. Huh. I think he did the Ric Flair walk. <laughs> Woo! Oh, we ain't finished. Uh-oh, we forgot. It's the Sabbath. Here they come. The religious leaders who always show up. Hey, fella, what you doing? Carrying my bed. Well, don't you know it's the Sabbath? I sure do. But he who healed me told me to rise up, take up my bed, and walk. And that's just what I'm going to do. Hey, hallelujah. Come on. I'm talking right. Huh. Now, later on in the story, they find the man. The Bible said Jesus went and found him. Guess where he was at? He was in the temple. He was in the temple. 
hadn't been to the temple because of his infirmity. But when Jesus showed up, the first place he showed up is the house of the Lord. Huh. I'm talking to you online. Some of you don't abandon the faith. But Jesus is waiting for you to show back up. It ain't over yet. He'll change your situation and your direction. Come on back home to where you're supposed to be. Yeah, Peter went fishing, but Jesus showed up on the shore, and it was no longer fishing for fish. He went fishing for folks, and that's what we're going to do at CFC. Huh? We ain't going to the fishing creek. We're going to fish for people out here in this lost and dying world. You better come on here. I'm done, Pastor. I'm done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on give God a praise. My God. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Go ahead and send for the children, CJ, My if you would. God. I think the teenagers are out uh, knocking on doors and whatnot. Hallelujah. But I I'll say this about this. This was a fantastic biblical example to go with this scripture. And uh, I have to go back and look at my upcoming scriptures to make sure it's not one of them. Um, but something that I always said is he was waiting on an angel, and he didn't realize the king of angels was in front of him. But also something that you said was that he was waiting for people to come and put him in the water. And because nobody put him in the water in time, he missed his opportunity. I think that a lot of times we put God in a box and we limit what we think uh, or how we can get healed and how we can be delivered. And it's got to be this, and a certain person needs to pray for me and all this and that. When we can go straight to the throne of glory. Amen. We don't have to wait to get in a tear-stained altar. Now, a tear-stained altar is here, and it's always going to be here. Uh, but the church isn't always open. Amen? But another thing is that Jesus came and told him something that nobody else ever said to him before. And that was, pick up your bed and walk. Rise up. Come up out of the situation that you're in. And I think a lot of times that self-pity makes, it'll isolate us. Because if we get around too many people, there might be somebody that's going to tell us something that we've not heard before. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, he wants to isolate people from hearing something different. Because a lot of times, if we just are around the same people all the time, we've gotten used to our situation. They've gotten used to our situation. And nobody ever comes in with a fresh wind to speak something different. And that is what Jesus Christ was personified. He was a fresh, mighty Russian wind that came through and spoke something so differently than what the Pharisees had been speaking. And they hated him for it. And they wanted to kill him for it. But I'm so glad that Jesus has taught us to be a fresh wind, to be a fresh perspective, to help change people's thinking. Because changing your thinking is how you begin to come out. Amen. Good word, Pastor Tim Hall. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, what we're going to do is he's going to go over the highlighted request only there. They're going to go ahead and bring him a notation of what uh, was given on uh, line. Uh, if I could get somebody to take Braden's place, he's not here, he's on vacation, but we certainly want those that are being baptized. You got it? Okay. Chuck's got it. Never mind, Sound Room. We got it. Uh, we want to make sure that we get to, to highlight them on social media. But at this time, if Sister Gladys would go to the bottom of the ramp and those being baptized would come and meet with her, I will get ready and go change, and we will get ready to baptize here in just a moment. But Pastor Tim is going to read the highlighted stuff on the prayer request as well as what the sound room brings him. Give us five minutes, and we'll be ready to baptize, and then we'll dismiss the service, okay? All right. God bless you.
Hallelujah. How many know that healing is the children's bread? Come on, talk to me. I said healing is the children's bread. The Bible declared that by your stripes we were healed. And we're standing on that word. We got a few names that we want to go over. Nikki Poland's father is having hernia surgery, repair surgery. I just found out today um, when I was talking to her that he's out of the hospital. Amen. We bless the Lord. God is already moving. Come on here. Hallelujah. Tommy McCray having brain surgery. Let's keep them in prayer. Ivan Jones, mom, for declining health and sisters having lymphotomy surgery. Dale Parker loosening blood and doctor doesn't know why. Having surgery on August the 8th. Amen. Amen. Prayer for, prayer for Jackson, Jason, Jason Ash, Tonsillotum, tomorrow. Is that surgery? I'm having surgery. Amen. We're going to keep him in prayer also. Casey Person, keep Addison in prayer. She's having dental work done under anesthesia. Susan Barnhill, asking for prayer for migraines and swelling in the ankles. Douglas Daniels asking for prayer. Kimberly Hackney, sick with sore throat and stomach issues. Douglas Daniels, remember and pray for him. Blood pressure, send him to the hospital today. Vicki Nix, please continue to pray for a father who's recovering from his surgical procedure this afternoon. Teresa Adam Pearson, Pearson, continue for prayer. Pearson, J Justin Pearson. Amen. We believe in God. We're going to move on every one of these situations. Sally Lauren, Lauren, sister, excuse me, lawyer. Okay, thank you, darling. Sister's in the hospital with her only kidney not functioning, recovery from back surgery as well. Amen. How many believe in the power of prayer? Come on. Just wave your hand if you believe in the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you tonight, God. We give you thanks. We give you honor and give you praise, God. God, you've heard every one of these requests, God. But even from the foundation of the earth, you knew, God. You knew what they had need of, God, and we thank you, God. You knew just how the enemy was going to attack, God. But, God, I thank you, God, that through every one of these trials and tribulation, God, that you're building them up, God, and you're turning things around. For your word declared by your stripes we were healed, God. You said healing is the children's bread, God. And, God, we're looking to you, the author and the finish of our faith. God, I heard you spoke to a noble man, God, and told him, Thy son shall live, God. And he left in faith, God. And when he got home, God, his son was already restored, God. So, God, I'm praying now that you will stir, stir up the water, God, in every one of their lives, God. Bring forth healing and deliverance as only you can, God. We're trusting and we're believing in you, God. And we're counting it done, God. We know, God, that you're well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And we thank you now for what you're going to do, God. We thank you now, God, that it's turning around even now, God. And, God, we're praying, God, for a good report on every one of these situations, God. For you are the king of glory, God. And, God, we're opening the door and we're letting you in. Come in like a flood, God. Overtake the enemy, God, in every one of these situations. We thank you now. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And all the church said, Amen. hallelujah, and it is Amen. so. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody doing all right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I had a dear, my dear sister right there. I don't want to mess up that cast. So she says she's going to be out of that cast by next month. And so we're going to baptize her next month. Okay. But I told her, just like the thief on the right, Jesus told him. He didn't have time to get baptized. He said, 
But today you shall be with me in paradise. So I told you, you're just as saved as I am. Amen? But I appreciate her heart and still wanting to be baptized tonight. But I'd rather for that cast to be wrapped up good. I don't think it can get wet. Amen? And so she says she'll be out of that cast by next month. But can we just thank God for her tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Here we go. I'm going to begin with our first contestant. Amen. Okay. You ready? Who do we have here? This is Molly. Molly. All right, Molly. All right. Molly was recently in the altar and, yes. and said that she uh, uh, had asked the Lord into her heart at a That's young true. age. Yes. She said, but then adulthood came, <laughs> and she realizes that it's uh, just a relationship with Christ is way more than what she realized, and she's beginning that relationship yes. uh, through being here at CFC, Amen. and we appreciate Molly's honesty and her walk with God. And so she's going to be baptized for the first time. Hallelujah. In Jesus. And, and how old are you? 27. 27 years old. 27 years old. Well, Molly, I just, I tell you tonight, I'm excited for you. You're a young woman, a young Christian, a young mother, a young wife. Oh, yeah. And you got your whole life in front of you. And you don't want to do it without Jesus. No, no. And that is fantastic. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Billy Joe, would you get up tonight and just pray over Molly's baptism? Could you do that for me? Go right ahead. This is our missions director, and she's going to pray over your baptism tonight. Yes. Yes. Thank you, God. Amen, Billy Jean. Good Lord. I'm going to call on you more often. <laughs> Come on right here. Now, she show you how to hold your elbows out? Okay. Just hold your nose. One. There you go. Now, put your hand, put that hand on your nose. All right, put that hand on that elbow. You ready? Now, when you get ready to come up, just grab this rail. Bring okay. yourself right on up. And don't worry about a thing, Molly. Okay. I'm a professional. <laughs> All right, here we go. Molly. I baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I baptize you. Yeah. Come on, give Hallelujah. God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Molly. Amen. God bless you. Amen. One step at a time. One step at a time. Hallelujah. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, God. It's all Woo. right. Be real careful. I have had somebody fall before. Yeah. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. We got one more. Nicholas. Hey. I'm going to get out the way. Carlos is going to do this. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. It's all right. I'm here. Don't worry. This is a, a very special moment for me because I just remember when I was in this in this tub right here when I was getting baptized I was rededicating my life this was during COVID-19 guys about three years ago Amen. and um 
this is a sweet moment for me. I can just, if you asked me three years ago that, if you would have told me three years ago that you have your whole family here, that you'd be oh baptizing your little brother, I would say, yeah, cool, I don't know. Mm. I just want to come to church. Mm. But now the Lord is doing great things, and I want to say something to the youth, each and every single youth that's here. God can use you like he's used me for my family. Yes. Amen. When you come and you do this, your family, your parents are seeing it. Your siblings are seeing it. Yes. And they see how it affects you. And they're going to want some of that. They want oh. some of that healing, some yeah. of that, all that you're receiving. Yeah. So, like I said, don't give up. But continue going after him yes. and choose him first each and every day. Amen. He is going to use his generation like never before. Oh, and it starts with us. Amen. And we got to just be, we got to be an example. I know our parents got to be an example of what we can change their lives too. Because Jesus can use us for them as well. Amen. So, um, recently, um, we went to a summer camp this past year, Camp Maranatha, and um, he he gave his life there and the sal- and accepted salvation into his life, and he decided he was ready to be baptized. It's been a it's been a process here. Amen. Each and every sir, at each and every Sunday, we're asking, "Hey, you ready? You ready?" He said, "Not yet, not yet." And just recently, Thank this past God. Sunday, he said he was ready. Jesus. So we made it happen. We had a meeting with Pastor Tim, and um, we're, he's ready. He's ready. Uh-huh. What I want you to do first, I want you to pray over him, okay? And after you pray over him, then, then I'll tell you what to do next. Right. So you go he, right ahead and pray over him. He actually requested Miss Pam. Pam. Oh, Pam. right. Go ahead. He's requested Pamela. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you in here. Go ahead. He wants you to pray over his baptism. When you get ready to come up, the rail's right there. All right, Carlos, repeat after me. Say, Nicholas, my brother. Nicholas, my brother. I baptize you. I baptize you. In the name of our Lord and Savior. In the name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. I baptize you. I baptize you. Hallelujah. All the way. You got it. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to hallelujah. Hey. Somebody give God a hallelujah in this house. Hallelujah. Wherever you go tonight, wherever you go tomorrow, make sure that people know that you witnessed water baptism. That means people are getting saved. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll do it again the first Wednesday of next month as well. Already got people ready to roll for that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think we're going to have another one tonight, but they want grandmama to be here and grandpa to be here. And grandpa had surgery today, so we certainly understand that. The main thing is that they're saved. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and I will have uh, get here on time Sunday because we're going to be sending somebody off at the beginning of service. We're sending them out to pastor a church. And so we'll be sending them out and saying goodbye Sunday morning. You don't want to miss that. And also, we'll be telling you uh, what all this construction on each side of this building is all about. God bless you. Have a good night. Play some music, Leon. Play my song. Everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast. Or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. 
hit like, tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples marriage ministry we love you we want you to to sow into the church be a part of the church come on we love you if you got saved today you accepted jesus christ into your heart then we want you to message us right here on our page and we will call and pray for you again thank you for tuning in today pastor tim what say you to the wonderful people out there that's tuned in today we pray if this message has reached you because we're all about kingdom vision amen come see us well, you, we got a seat just for you. We love you. We thank you. And just continue to keep your faith in God's unchanging hand. And we enjoyed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless.